Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name's Jamie of Design by Binny, and in this video, I'm gonna be doing a walkthrough of my standard procedure for a Photoshop digital render. The line drawing itself was created in Adobe Illustrator as a vector file line drawing, and then transferred into Photoshop for the digital render itself. At this stage in the video, I am currently just labeling the first few layers that I'm gonna be using. So we have a, a tones layer, a shadows layer, uh, a sky and ground tones layer, and they are the basics that I will start with uh, with any digital render. The sky and ground tone layer isn't always essential. In, in some renders you won't need it at all, but I always like to start with it, have it there just in case. So I will select the sky and ground tone layer, select the color palette, and find a nice sky blue or something resembling a sky blue. I will then go to the brush tool and select a, quite a large brush, but also quite a soft brush and a brush that is not fully opaque. So I will have set my opacity level to I think about 20 or 40% at this point, which means I can then recover the same area to create darker tones if needs be. But for now, it's just a case of splitting the top and bottom half of the car around what would be in my estimations, the horizon line. And as you see now, adding a, another coat, if you will, of the, of the sky and ground tone color. And once the sky blue is applied, I'm gonna do the same with the ground tone, back to the color palette, select in this case uh, a sandy tone for the, for the ground tone and rinse and repeat the process. Once both colors are in, the next thing I'm doing is erasing the ground tone from certain areas that will still be facing upwards and require the sky blue tone and replacing that sandy tone with the sky blue. At this stage, some might elect to use the path tool to uh, select specific areas that they want to change the colors of, etc. However, I still, for the most part, prefer to just use the pen as a pen. Um, even when I'm doing digital renders, I tend to treat it as, as a piece of paper like I'm using a marker, just with the added benefit of being able to add other layers, edit them and erase. Now that the sky and ground tone layer is complete, I've reselected the original line drawing layer and grabbed the magic wand tool from the menu on the left and I'm now selecting the areas behind the spokes and in the back of the wheels between the spokes and the darkest sections of the wheel. And once selected, we will return to the shadow layer and we'll start putting some early shadows in just as a baseline. And then it's a case of removing any unnecessary parts of the sky and ground tones. And with that completed, we are now gonna deactivate the sky and ground tone layer as we concentrate now on putting down the first shadows and tones for the, for the base of the car itself. So having selected the shadow layer and selected a soft brush, moving the opacity of the brush down to about 30%, again, so we can, uh, we can build darker tones as we go. I tend to work with one source of light in terms of the direction the light hits the car from and therefore the direction of the shadows and all the smaller highlights. It just keeps everything more simple and for the most part makes things look cleaner and crisper as well. With these first tones, with the, with the large strokes and, the, uh, and the, soft, the soft pen that I'm using, this is again more based on effectively what I would do on paper. The only difference is I'm being a bit looser because I will have the opportunity to delete, erase anything that's over lines where it shouldn't be. Of course you have the option if you don't like a certain line or a certain position of something, you have the opportunity like just there where you can redo it and make sure it's exactly as you want it to be. But at the moment, just building up the tones. And also with the tones being so far on one layer, I can get the eraser out and as you see here, remove any shadows that have leaked over into what will be highlighted areas. So for the moment, we're gonna leave the body tones there and create a new layer, which is basically for the underside shadows. Uh, so not the shadows on the surface of the car, but the shadows in the arches and on the floor. 
And the reason for creating this on a new layer rather than adding it to the tones is uh, it means you don't have to worry about interfering with the tones from the body that are already there. You can do these on a separate layer and then trim the bits that you don't need. Now this is another point where I could have used the path tool and created the outlines exactly as I need them for, for these particular sections like the shadows under the car and the shadows under the arches. However, as I'm on a separate layer, I will have the opportunity to trim again any excess, any areas that I don't need and it will leave me with exactly the, the shapes and the shadows that I require and then at a later stage in the render process I'll be merging the, uh, the darker tones and the shadows into, into a single layer anyway. So with the underside shadows and under arch shadows completed, just need to pop a small shadow on the hood cowl and then we go to make a new layer and we're going to do the same thing again as we did on the underside and create a layer purely for the interior and therefore the shadows that will be created with it. So just putting the basic shape in with a thick brush tool, basically covering all the lines from the line drawing. And then once that's done, simply reducing the opacity so you can see the line drawing again and then trimming it by hand as we've done so far with other parts of this render. There, were, there are some parts in just a moment that you'll see I use the magic wand tool for because they're enclosed shapes that have, uh, that have lines on all sides. So I go back to the line drawing layer and select the shapes just here and then return to the shadow layer and delete those selected areas so it's one way to save a bit of time if you do have a line drawing and there are enclosed shapes within that line drawing so once any excess shading has been removed from uh, the outside of the window lines it's now a case of grabbing the eraser tool, going back to the main shadow layer and just removing any shadows where they don't need to be. Obviously the haunch and the top of the arch would be reflective as would the, uh, the outer bits of the skirt on the rear end. I then also quite often utilize the smudge tool as you'll see here, rather than actually creating new marks, I'm just moving and manipulating the shadows that are already there. Now what I'm doing here is uh, it looks as though I'm applying highlights or white strokes. However, what I'm actually doing is using the eraser to work back into the shadows that I just created. And that will be tidied up in due course. But now it's time to reactivate the sky and ground tone layer. And as you can see, it's nowhere near as bright as it was at the start of the video where the colors were opaque. What I've now done is reduced the opacity of the layers of the layer, excuse me, to 20%. So now we're gonna go ahead and add the tone for the tires. So same procedure as with the shadows underneath the car and the interior uh, window shadows, create a new layer. And once all the necessary areas have been shaded in, it's a case of going around the outside or any areas that you want trimming and removing any unnecessary unwanted shades. And once that looks good, we can increase the opacity once again on the tire layer. Just add a little shadow there under the wing on the main shadow layer. And we're also going to quickly adjust the opacity on the interior window shadows, make that a little bit darker as well. And now it's time to create some paths using the pen tool so that we can more accurately and cleanly adjust larger areas of the shadow layer without having to worry about interfering with any parts that we don't want to touch. I'm creating this path because the area within the path is an area that I want to clear of any shadows or shades. Once the path is finished, I will right click the path itself, select make selection and in the box that currently says zero, I will up that to 35 and that means that the transition will be smoother and softer between one side of the path line and the other which gives you this effect so rather than that line where the shadow was being a harsh line it's now a smooth soft transition 
and to match that we'll just slightly erase and reduce the intensity of the shadow under the shoulder line. And that's going to do it for part one of the walkthrough. Thank you very much for tuning in. Please subscribe to Design by Binny TV on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram at Design by Binny. And I'll be bringing you part two of the walkthrough very soon. Thank you.